and I might bring a post hole digger. I was thinking about how to dig on that bank, you know, because bank is like this and you're trying to dig a hole like this with a shovel, which is meaning that I'm not gonna have much of a place to stand, but with a post hole digger, I could kind of plunge it into the ground, pick the dirt up and set it aside. And then once I get a big enough hole, slip that plant in there. It might be easier or better than a shovel. Now I have reduced the size of this by quite a lot. Those two pieces I took out were grown into the big main plant. So I had to cut through it to get down to it. There's some smaller ones over here that'd probably be a lot easier to dig up. But like these two out on this far end. But that might be all I need for now. I don't know. I'll rest a little bit and I'll see how I feel later. I still gotta fill this hole back in here. You know. So yeah, let's go uh, let's go find us a resting place. Might be a sunny spot around here on the front steps. Where I take my boots off without walking all this mud on them on the porch. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I would share some wise words with y'all, but I don't have any in my head right now. So. You're lucky today you get off without me giving you a sermon, I guess. Maybe later something will come to mind. <laughs> For now, I'm just happy to be alive. Happy to have some dirt under my fingernails and be out here doing a little work. I need to do work because I noticed feeling a little bit like I need to exercise lately. I walked down the backyard the other day and felt, oh, my legs are kind of stiffish. And it seems like they just ain't been used enough lately. So, yeah, a little bit of work would be good. I'm gonna roll up my cuffs. So there's any dirt on my pants. I can't get in the house, so I decided to go in there. I just have to remember to unroll them, otherwise they dump whatever's in them into the washing machine, and that don't please Honey Baby too much. I got a coffee cup here. I got this from the church that I was going to up in Maine a while. It was a holiness church over in Oakland. This is on earth as it is in heaven. That's a nice church. I, here it is. It's Kingdom Life Church up in Oakland, Maine. I liked that church. I liked the way they worship. They have like an hour and a half long worship service where they play music and people dances around in the aisles and oh, it's just wild. And I love that kind of thing. You know, I think uh, I think a lot. I think a Baptist and, and uh, maybe the Methodist. They're they're nice people, but so they're pretty staid. You get up, start dancing around the Baptist church, they might throw you out. They think you, they think you, they might think you're demon possessed. <laughs> start praying for the demons to leave your body, or something like that. But over in the Holiness Church, you know, in the in the Book of Psalms, King David, he wasn't a king when he started out. It was David, the shepherd boy. He danced. When they went to war, they sent musicians and dancers out in the front to lead the way. And uh, when he came back to town after winning the battle, he danced his way back into town and sang and did poetry and played musical instruments and all that stuff. And God, there was a, there was a place in, the, in there somewhere where one of David's wives was thinking that he was a fancy, dancy show-off when he was coming back into town and dancing. And God rebuked her. He said, he's, he's dancing for my glory. Don't you be criticizing him. So, just something to think about. Y'all don't be scared to dance. See, you got a sermon after all. You couldn't get away from it. Dang. Bless y'all's heart. Y'all had to put up with so much on account of me. My, my. So this here is a, a mixture of coffee and mushroom and cinnamon in my coffee cup with a little bit of soy milk. Boy, that's how I roll. I'm a, I'm a new age redneck. No, I think right. New age. 
high tech. I'm a high tech redneck, high tech. I don't know what I am. I'm just saved by grace. <laughs> Finish this up, I'll get me a glass of tea with some lemon juice and apple cider vinegar in and, and it and the honey. Yeah, that's how I roll. I don't know if I'd say I'm on a health kick or not, but I, I, I want to be healthy in my old age. You know, I want to live to be a hundred and something. And uh, me and Hudbabe talk about this a lot. You know, it's important for me to outlive her because I don't want her to have to make it on her own with me not around to help with things. So, and then promise her I'd outlive her. So, in order to do that, I have to eat right. The other thing I ought to be probably doing is exercising. But I hate, I hate exercising for the sake of exercising. You know, just to go run somewhere just so you can say you ran or just to walk somewhere just so you can say you walked. Now, I've been walking around in these woods a goodly bit lately. I was over there in those woods and I've been marking out the property line. And, from front to back. And it's hard to see all the way from the front where the pin is all the way on the back. So you kind of have to go away. So what I was doing is I was stretching a string and then I'd go over the hill and look where it went to and I'd come from the other end to stretch a string and then I'd look and see what I, if I had straight lines between the two strings then I'd stretch another one. And of course you have to go on one side of a tree or another side of a tree or over the top of one that's fell down or underneath the branches. And, Took me all day walking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I finally got it about where I wanted it and some of the line was stretched so tight that it was up about middle high and I thought, well, that won't be good if, if a deer comes through here, they'll walk, they'll walk into that line and tear it down. So I drove some stakes in the ground over there yesterday where the, where the line is. That way if a deer or an animal comes through and tears it down. I got another piece of land on the other side of the one where mine ends and I don't even know the property boundaries on it. I know where the pin is for the back side, I think. And I never have found the pin for the front side, but I could pull a tape measure from my pin to that pin and get that. But there's no real reason that I need to know that line exactly because nobody lives on that middle lot and I'm not doing anything with that far lot. So, you know, if I was going to try to push a road in there and park some old junk cars on there, you know, something like that, put me up a landfill over there, I'd, I'd want to mark the boundary, but uh, I'd rather just have it like it is with trees on it, because it, in the summer, the sun sets right over in here, and the more trees there are between me and over yonder, the, the more shade there is here, so that I don't get that old hot sunshine you know, bacon that's probably sitting here, so. That's one of the reasons I bought that. Um, I, the guy that owned it was talking about coming in and clear-cutting that lot, and I said, nah, uh I don't want that. And then I got to thinking, too. But, well, the other thing is we used to have, you may notice you ain't seen any cars drive up down this road. Well, there's no reason for them to because there's nothing back here except us. But that lot, was for sale over there for the whole time I've been living here and we used to get people driving up and down this road all the time because they'd see the sign and then they'd drive down in here looking for what was for sale and, uh, and, and you know a lot of times they thought that I had something for sale or something you know it's it just involved a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities to meet people that I didn't necessarily need to know you know it wasn't that they weren't good people and of course that's the other thing is somebody drives up turns around and leaves. You don't know if they're stalking out over here to see if there's anything worth stealing or if they're just uh, looking for something like a piece of land or trying to be neighborly. So I figure, well, if, I, if that sign that said land for sale wasn't up there, they wouldn't be coming in here. And if I bought that piece of land and that sign wouldn't be there because there ain't nothing for sale anymore. So. That's two, that's a couple of reasons why I went ahead and bought that. There was a time when I was talking to Rusty Acres about maybe putting a camper over there or something, but then we had some issues in the neighborhood about people objecting to certain things that was happening on pieces of property. And you know, we were talking back then about maybe he had, he's got an old antique camper trailer. And it'd be cool to set it up somewhere, but uh, and, uh, there's no place you could set it without 
being in somebody's yard because I can see the house over there from here even with two lots between us. No way, three lots between us. So. Anyway, I advised him he might be better off to just look into it real closely and see what he couldn't couldn't do with that lot. And then I think other other things happened. But he's had he's had issues. He's had family members that's gotten sick and people he's had to take care of and a lot of things. He's been busy, bless his heart. And he's too far away for me to go down there and give him a hand with any of that. We talk about getting together a lot, but you know he's. People sometimes just got lives to live and they don't, you know, as much as they'd love to just run around the country playing with other YouTubers, and they don't always have the, the wherewithal or the time or anything to do it, so. Yeah, and Luke Palioko, I've been talking, we've been talking to him for a long time about having him come down here and live in the camper for a while. That might happen, he's, uh, he's talking more about doing that. Be nice to have him down here, he'd be, uh, uh, Luke's fun to hang out with. Uh, he's a good guy. If, <clears throat> if y'all ever go back and look at me building that trailer, that hot rod trailer out of the refrigerator, you'll see me hanging around with Luke a good bit. He's He's got quite a sense of humor. Fun guy. All right. So I can't seem to sit down without just chitter-chattering with y'all. Honey Baby, I don't know if you probably saw the video the other day. I was in the garage and I was talking to y'all. Honey Baby walked up and she said, what are you doing out here? Oh, you just talking to YouTubers. I should have known. You're out here just chitter-chattering away, you know. That's how I am. That's how I roll, buddy. Whew, about caught my breath now. Still got some coffee to drink, but it won't be too long before I'll be ready to go down there and dig another hole. I think I'm going to get me some dry gloves. Those gloves were soaking wet when I got those pieces out of the ground over there. This mushroom stuff doesn't dissolve real well, so it's a little grainy. Sometimes it's stuck in the bottom of the cup, so I usually shake it around so I can drink it down. But cinnamon's like that too, you know, cinnamon don't really dissolve very well. <clears throat> okay then. <clears throat>